Yes, it is DBJ. Um, this series is about stunt work. Uh, in each of these videos, I'm going to detail a cinematic environment and the rules I would use. I'm mostly going to be using Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, but of course it can be used for any environment. Uh, I will probably try to do some sci-fi as well, but each one is just going to detail one cinematic idea, um, how it can be modified or whatever. So in this stunt work series, we're going to talk about the rope bridge, the classic rope bridge, crossing from A to B, across a chasm, across, um, it could be in the windy peaks of a snowy mountain, and you have to go across this narrow bridge, and you picture the rope bridge. You know, you've got rope on both sides, you're using both hands, it's kind of rickety, maybe there's wood slats all the way across, it could be hundreds of feet long, and maybe there's one rope bridge. Maybe there's a whole community where there's 10, 15, 200 rope bridges where people live in a valley and they just cross back and forth. Maybe they're, they're uh, goblinoids flying on pterodactyls or something in between and outside and through all these rope bridges. Maybe there's um, uh, airships like balloons or people fly, flying in gliders. Um, there are, this could be in the underdark, in the dark realms where... There are people riding on spiders and, uh, and cave fishers as they go up the walls. And in between the stalactites and the stalagmites are these rope bridges or whatever. Okay. Now, the rope bridge could be made out of other materials. It could be a strong material, maybe a stone bridge. It can be, but you have to cross a narrow path to get from one area to another. This, the rope bridge idea could also be the, the classic walk along the cliff side. You know, you've got the steep cliff, you've got a narrow path, you've got another steep cliff, and you have to pass from one area to another. All right? Well, in 5th edition, um, I'm using the 5th edition rule of three. And I, I'm picking this up from them. This is not what they created, but my interpretation of what they've created. All right? And there's three things. One is the stat skill set, okay? Whenever you are being active to do something, you roll a skill, and if you don't have that skill, you usually roll the stat, all right? So you have a proficiency bonus, you have proficiency with a particular skill, and or a proficiency with a particular type of stat. You roll your dice, a d20, plus add that, go against a difficulty. There's also the, the classic saving throw. You've got six stats. Game Master says, Dungeon Master says, hey, you have to resist this happening to you. Make a saving throw. You roll that stat plus those bonuses with a d20 and beat a difficulty. And something happens in between. And lastly is the idea of advantage and disadvantage. You roll two d20s and you take the higher of the two or you roll two d20s Take the lower of the two. And in between the add, the advantage and disadvantage is inspiration. So I call it the aid system. I don't think it's called officially the aid system, but I call it the aid system. So when using the aid system, you can use inspiration to modify or waylay an advantage or disadvantage, either negating it or creating for you an advantage or a disadvantage for somebody else. So three, three things. Roll a skill stat check, roll a saving throw using your stats and or skills or proficiencies, and advantage, disadvantage, and inspiration. Using those three things, you can pretty much create any kind of stunt work you want. All right? So, let's get to the nitty gritty. You've got this long bridge. So, you need to get from A to B. You can establish how long it takes to get from A to B. Now, if you want to use specifics, how many feet it is, I picked 120 feet. As Because of theater of the mind, you're not playing on a grid, you're playing with players over the internet. Sometimes theater of the mind is the best you can do unless you're using like a Roll20 or a Fantasy Grounds or some other digital representation of how long it takes or how far it is to get from one place to another. With theater of mind, you can always just state as a, as a game master, well, when firing your crossbows and arrows or spells, it's at long range. 
to get to the other side. If you move as fast as you can, it's going to take you two rounds, etc. So I'm picking 120 feet. And these are the three different things that could happen as the players travel from point A to point B. All right? One is the player, player characters just want to sprint right across the bridge. I'm going to run as fast as I can. There's maybe enemies. Maybe they're shooting bows and arrows or throwing javelins or rocks or something. Maybe there's guys on pterodactyls and blah, blah, blah. There could be enemies. Maybe there is no enemy. You just want to rush to the other side because it is rickety old bridge, right? So, okay, uh, we're using the 5e rules. I'm going to sprint. So my running speed's double. I can move 60 feet. Takes me two rounds. 60 feet, boom, to the middle. 60 feet, boom, to the other side. I'm done. Well... Because you're moving at full speed, you're not really dodging. You're not. You're just. You're just going all out on a roll. Because the bridge is narrow, all attacks on you are now at advantage. They have advantage to go after you. And as a game master, you can have your players describe. Well, how are you doing this? Well, I'm just. I'm just hauling ass. I'm just going to go straight across. Okay. Well, I'm letting you know. Because you can't, you can't move side to side, you can't do all these things, you are at, all attacks against you are at advantage. Yes, you're moving, but hey, you're, you're on a small little narrow area. They know you're in a funnel of death, okay? Boom, they're going to go after you. They got two rounds to go, boom, and go after you. The player characters may go, okay, well, you go first, run for it, boom, 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 boom. attack at advantage, okay, next person, run, go for it, boom, 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 boom. all right? Well, could that be modified by everyone running across at the same time? Sure. Hell yeah. Okay, if one person, let's say there's 20 enemies. If each guy takes one, goes one at a time, that's 20 attacks. If they all go, and there's five of them, well, maybe that, there's four attacks split between all of them. You know, maybe that might be a more tactical thing to do. All right, well, instead of just going at a full run and sprint, maybe you want to kind of move your way across quickly but you're going to use your shield to block whatever's coming with you. Maybe you're the rogue and you're going to try to dodge as much as you can and flip over the rope and climb under the underside or whatever and move around. Yeah. Okay, so your character's got a movement of like 30 feet. Well, that means it's going to take you four rounds to get across, right? So because you are, you're saying, well, I'm going to fully defend myself, whether that means holding up my shield whether casting my spell to block stuff, I'm going to avoid the rocks and javelins that are coming out. As the thief, I'm going to try to climb underneath the thing, you know, rope bridge and get out of there, whatever have you. Well, you're, because they have advantage, because you're in a limited space, and you're giving your opponents disadvantage to attack you, they cancel each other out. They just have regular rolls to hit you. Whatever your AC is, that's what they have to attack you. Now, because you're in a rope bridge, the idea that you may have a dex bonus might be like, well, you don't have a dex bonus to do this. I would err in favor that you do have a dex bonus. Even in narrow areas like that so much, you know, would the roguish character be able to jump around and maybe swing up underneath the rope and climb? Like, hell yeah. That's cinematic. I love that stuff. So, yes. Now, Let's say the player characters want to go across this rope bridge. You go across and they're going to move as fast as they can, but I want to launch my, my arrows. I would use my crossbow. I'm going to fire a spell and move and attack while I'm going across this rope bridge. All right? Well, attacks from the rope bridge, they're not modified by anything. You're, you don't have advantage or disadvantage. But they have advantage on you because you can't move anywhere. You can only dodge so many places. All right, narrow area, funnel of death, stunt work. Okay, now I, there are, I use those three examples. I'm going to, hey, one is sprint, hell, I run as fast as I can, sprint straight across. Okay, adjudicate that. The next one is, I'm going to move as fast as I can across, but I'm going to dodge as many attacks. I'm going to move fast, move back, dodge, pull my shield up. You know, I'm, I'm going to parry attacks with my sword because I'm a great swords person. I'm going to make sure that I, I, I stumble, move side to side or whatever to get across. Last one is, hey, I'm going across, but I'm launching attacks. They're on pterodactyls. They're ab uh, above at the, the top of the, the ridge, and they're shooting down on us. 
hey, I'm going to shoot up at them, I'm, I'm, you know, blasting them with fire or cold or something, what, what have you. But there's many a complication you can add to this. And you know, you got your classic rope bridge, you can always add these complications. So here are my three complications. One is they try to cut the bridge. The second complication is you're pelted with stones. Last complication are broken slats. All right, so cut the bridge. Idea, classic, I'm going to take a knife, cut through the rope, and knock the bridge down. Now, that's great if you're already on the other side, or maybe there's enemies coming across the bridge towards you, but what if you're on the bridge, right? So, whoever decides to cut that rope, they're not moving anywhere. So they're probably at disadvantage to dodge any attacks. Sure, they might have some shield people around to try to block them. But hey, if you got some goblinoids cutting through the rope, you got some bandits that don't want to be um, that you're chasing after, and they're trying to cut the rope bridge before it falls. Hey, shoot their asses, kill them. Got to. Hey, they're probably at disadvantage. But if you can get all the way across, make that saving throw. Boom. Where's that difficulty to get across? Get there before your friends fall. Now. With the cutting the bridge, you're going to have to probably make a skill check or saving throw to hold on for dear life. And there are four steps to any skill check and or saving throw. There's, there's four outcomes. The highest outcome is a crit. You roll a 20. You roll a natural 20, that's a crit. You Pathfinder, where you got to check a crit, hell no. You get a crit... Something spectacular happens. You, you cartwheel forward. You land on the ledge as they cut the rope bridge and you slice their asses up or whatever. You land there, no problem. You got a crit. There's a success, which means you succeed in holding onto the bridge. If you're at the, the end where the enemies are cutting the bridge, you jump on that side. If you're at the nearest end, you grab onto the rope bridge and you fall with the bridge and it slams up against the cliff side. There's failure which means you miss. Jump for it. Oh, no, I'm going to fall. You're at the back end of the bridge. Oh, no, they, they're going to cut the bridge. I can't back up. Blah, 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 blah. And you fail. And the last one is a complete and utter fumble. It is a rolling a one on a D20. It is the, I didn't see that, them, that coming, and fall down. Now you may say, well, is that basically a save versus death? Cinematically, no. Using 5th edition as a, as a um, framework, they have a death save of making three rolls. So I use that same three roll technique as a cinematic idea. So if you allow three opportunities to have them save themselves, that's extremely cinematic. If they have two opportunities to do it, you're getting more gritty. If you have just one opportunity, you're hyper-realistic. Three, two... One. So, because 5th edition D&D has, has a death save, that means when you're below zero hit points, you have three opportunities to sustain your life, essentially. Um, I'm using that as a template for three saving throws. So, they cut the bridge. You fail your saving throw to, to, to get to the other side. You're falling. Make a roll to grab onto the vine or grab onto the falling bridge. Oh, you missed that. You have one last roll to hold on for dear life as you, as you tumble down the bridge and hold on to one of the broken slats. Or you have one last opportunity to uh, land in the water and survive. Okay? Or get tangled up in weeds or something hanging off the bridge. Or, or fall onto a pterodactyl rider. Or one last opportunity, you know... You, you failed getting across the bridge, you failed holding on to the bridge, so now you have the opportunity to, to roll to fall onto a bridge that's below you if there's a whole society of, you know, where there's bridges everywhere or something like that. Three opportunities. Very cinematic, gritty, realistic. One roll and you're, or you're dead. Anyway, back to the point. Cutting the bridge. Um, also, player characters should be concerned about damage to the bridge itself. If they're casting spells, especially ones that burn 
you're probably going to make it worse for everybody else, even if it's a, something simple as a burning hand spell. That's just as dangerous as a fireball spell on a rope bridge. You might not want to do that, right? But, hell, so as if all the players get to the other side, setting that damn bridge on fire with a burning hand spell is a great way to stop the people coming after you. Now let's go to the second one. That was the first complication by cutting the bridge. Second complication is pelted by stones. Now, being pelted could mean anything from there, you know, people throwing huge stones, javelins. The idea of being pelted by stones is not to damage the players, but to knock them off the bridge. Here's how I would handle it. First of all, you have no armor class from armor. That is a steep thing. Now understand, you're being pelted by stones. The idea is to knock you off the bridge. You do not have armor class from armor. You only have armor class from your decks, and you have armor class from a shield. That's it. Why? Because if you're in chain mail and plate mail or leather, it doesn't matter. The idea is that you get hit, not that it causes damage. Armor class is a combination of your speed and how much physical protection you have from kinetic energy. Whether it's a being stabbed or whether it is a blunt object. You do not have to suffer injury to be pushed off of a ledge. If someone just comes by and shoves your shoulder and you trip and fall, that doesn't mean you suffered any damage. The damage comes from the fall. So, here's how I would handle it. Have the enemies roll to hit. Remember, you're on the bridge, so they may have advantage to hit you. They roll to hit, bam. I'd probably use, um, I'd probably use a D4 for lower levels and move up from there. Uh, in the Dungeon Master's Guide, there's um, it talks about using the um, using proficiency. And here's a Dungeon Master's Guide. Bam. And page, let's go to 263. Page of 263, up at the very top, it talks about um, Instead of using proficiency bonuses, it talks about using dice. I'm probably getting too close. It's probably all like weirded out and shit. Anyway, uh, it says from first to fourth level is a D4, uh, fifth through eighth is D6, so on and so forth. Ninth through twelfth, D8, thirteenth through sixteenth level is D10, seventeenth to twentieth level, D12. So, using this as a as a standard, I would use a D4. And why I say I use a D4 is because I would have them roll to hit, roll a d4, not for damage, but that's what gets added to the difficulty of remaining on the bridge. So let's say you establish like a difficulty of 10, right? You got to beat a 10. You're like, well, I can easily beat a 10. I roll a d4. Oh, roll a 4. You got to beat, your character gets pelted in the back of the head with a stone. You got to beat a 14. You got hit in the ankle. You have to beat an 11. You got hit in the stomach. You have to roll a thir beat a 13. So that gives it a little bit of a variation instead of, okay, everybody hit, you got to roll a 15 difficulty um, class or something like that. Beat that for a saving throw. You can alter it with the D4. Maybe even throw a D6 in there to kind of, you know, throw a monkey wrench into it. But I would have them roll against that saving throw not to be thrown off the bridge. That's me. All right. Now, um, last one is broken slats. That's the, go across the bridge, it's all rickety and old slats and stuff, and you might step your foot through a slat. Again, because you're on the bridge, if you're moving at full speed, I would give you disadvantage. I would say, okay, you have a DC 15 check to step through a slat, perception check. And you can move across. If you move a, at sprint speed, you got two rounds, you got to make two rolls at disadvantage using your strength or dex or whatever is appropriate to hold on because you broke a slat. Oh, rolled your dex. Okay, you broke a slat, but you kept on going. Or you broke a slat, but you held on with your strength to keep on going, right? Um, or... You roll your wisdom, and you see a few broken slats, and you run over top of them, so you miss them. All right? Okay. 
if you're moving at full speed, you're not looking for any danger or anything. You just want to get the hell across. They're flying on their pterodactyls. They're flying on their wyverns. Yes, I pronounced it wyverns, not wyverns. Whatever, however other people pronounce it. I call them wyverns. Anyway, so they're attacking on manticores or something, and you're like, well, if I run at full speed, I only need to make two rolls. It might be a disadvantage, but my character's pretty good. Otherwise, I gotta make four rolls if I go at combat speed, because I'm kind of looking out for what's going on beneath me. You know, that's what I would use. Maybe a DC of 10, maybe a DC of 15, um, or go back and forth. D hey, you got a DC 10 to avoid the slats, but a DC of 15 if you're running. Whatever it may be. Um, I would not alter the DC if they're at disadvantage. I would alter the DC if it's just a straight roll. So anyway, um, that's it for, for uh, stunt work for the rope bridge. Like I said, you can also modify this for other games. So, using the advantage and disadvantage thing, if you are, if your player characters are on a space station and they're on a spindle and it's revolving around and they're on the outside and they have to get from, go outside into vacuum and they have to go from one area to another and there's enemies on space cycles and they're shooting at them or something. They would, might suffer a penalty because maybe they're in, in uh, spacesuits with magnetic clamps and they have to go walk or go across a cable or walk across the outside and magnetically from one area to another. And if they sprint, whoa, they're at a big serious disadvantage because they're just going to fall off the space station and go flying. Or they're going to lose their grip on the, or the magnetic cable to go from their spindle to their spaceship or something. But if they go slower and shoot their laser pistol, hey, they can do this, but they're also at a disadvantage, at a disadvantage, not specifically disadvantage. They're at a disadvantage because they can't move too many places, so the guys on their space cycles shooting their lasers off their space cycles, and the player characters have their blaster pistols, are trying to shoot at them. Yes, it's going from A to B in a narrow, narrow lane to get there. Same thing with the cliff side and the little ledge and the, the cliff... Classic Lord of the Rings, there's no hand railings. I don't know why there's no hand rails. Because my ass be scared all the time. Or I'd be sitting, bitching, like, why are we building a staircase this tall? Can't we just put in a handrail or a rope or something? But anyway, the same thing about the cliff side, having things pelted and thrown at them. Maybe the cliff edge is one that will fall. It's, it'll crumble away if you're not careful where you step and it'll just crumble and fall away, you know, instead of broken wooden broken slats, it crumbles away into the, the dark reaches of the, of the valley below where you can, you know, you can't see anything and you can have the triple saving throw where you make a roll so you don't um, make the road crumble, you make a roll because you start sliding down and you hold onto a ledge and then you make another roll to grab onto a root before you fall down to your doom, right? Cinematic, Gritty, realistic. So, that all being said, whew, I went on forever with this stunt work video. But, stunt work, the rope bridge, below I will list all of those elements that I talked about in a more concise form. You can just cut and paste all the hell you want. <laughs> um, DBJ, as always, trying to be creative, not destructive. And I am out. <laughs>